Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, March 1st, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storms on Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I've got a diary by Brad today talking about, well, uh, the latest news around Quarkbot or Qbot as it's sometimes uh, called. This particular infection uh, came thanks to a URL marked at virus total. And as usual, Brad uh, ran the sample, collected traffic and collected with that also indicators of compromise. Couple of interesting components from that compromise. Uh, first of all, uh, the bot downloads an encrypted zip file, but uh, then also connects to an HTTPS website with a self-signed certificate where the organization name in a certificate and the common name is gifts.com, but the certificate is not actually associated with that site. Maybe the attacker is trying to sort of uh, fool analysts here to see the host name in the certificate and ignore it as harmless, just considering that a user may have just visited that particular site by IP address instead of host name. Not really sure why they do it, but that's sort of uh, my best guess. Another uh, thing that's probably worthwhile mentioning again, it's nothing new here, but uh, this particular bot also uses about a dozen different normal sites for connectivity check like rs.gov, oracle.com, microsoft.com and others. So those sites are just used by the bot to check connectivity, should probably not be used as an indicator of compromise in some kind of detection scheme. And if you have more details from LastPass regarding the incident that ultimately led to the theft of some encrypted password or wallets, uh, well, the additional details note that the initial access actually happened via a compromised developer's workstation. Apparently, the software package Plex media player was used in order to gain access to the employee's laptop and from there the attacker was essentially using sessions that uh, this person established via VPNs and such in order to ride along and gain access to additional resources within LastPass's network. I think the attack against the developer and also the mix of the use of personal and of course a business use of that particular system by the developer is certainly something interesting to consider if you are looking for ways to protect yourself from similar attacks. Multi-factor authentication may have helped here, but if I read the report right, it may have been in place at least for parts of the access and was bypassed by the attacker by essentially just using, for example, VPN tunnels that this person had established. Overall, I'm always a big fan if uh, companies are making these kind of details available uh, because that's something for all of us uh, to learn. So I recommend that you read the two-part details that were published by LastPass. And talking about learning from others, uh, CISA published a report uh, with the lessons learned from the CISA red team, essentially what they found sort of stops them, what makes their life more difficult. Two-factor authentication is right at the top here, of course, again. Also, interestingly, uh, just because of that last pass uh, story, uh, they also ran again into a password manager uh, key pass in this case and uh, were able uh, to gain access uh, to uh, the key pass database by pulling decryption keys from memory. And that's really sort of one general lesson uh, with all the talk uh, that has sort of happened in the last uh, months or so about password managers that once an attacker does have access uh, to the uh, workstation of a user, it's almost always impossible to sort of prevent access to the password manager. The attacker is 
usually able to, for example, deploy a keystroke logger or access memory just like the user would be able to access it. So uh, there is little that prevents an attacker from gaining access to whatever data is needed in order to gain access to the password manager. And talking about CISA, CISA also added a new vulnerability to its active exploited vulnerability lists. Uh, this time it's the CK Java web framework. So this is a vulnerability with a CVSS score of 7.5 that's currently uh, being exploited. And well, uh, something a little bit more funny at the end, uh, there is an interesting website now, jailbreakchat.com, essentially uh, prompts uh, tricks that you can use in order to gain access to functionality that chat GPT usually doesn't allow access to. Uh, essentially sort of social engineering the machine. And like I said, at this point, uh, this is probably more for entertainment purposes versus a real threat. And that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.